Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking Mars animation effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to generate our artwork. Now I'm using Adobe Firefly for this and I've just put in a bunch of keywords like abandoned outpost on the edge of a mountain of Mars, thorn and deep valley in the background, uh, dust Storms. The other thing that I've added here is I've gone down and I've changed some of the settings. I've changed my aspect ratio to 16 by 9 because I want widescreen. I've changed it to an actual photo. Um, I've added some things like steampunk, vibrant color, studio lighting, blurry background. And once I've done all that, it was able to give me this image that I really liked and that's the one that I'm going to be using. So all I had to do is just download this and then I'll take it into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and I've just created a new composition here and I'm just going to drag my image into here. So all I have to do is just make sure that my image fits my entire screen. Just press enter. I need to rasterize this layer first just by right clicking and pressing rasterize. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the rectangular marquee tool and then I'm just going to go to edit content aware fill and I'm going to see what it comes up with. My output settings, I'm going to change to the current layer. I'm just going to press uh, OK. And it's done a pretty good job over there. Now, the only other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the Spot Healing Brush tool. And if you want to increase the size of your Spot Healing Brush, it's the brackets. But if you don't like anything, you know, for example, maybe like something like that, what you can do is you can go and you can add this Spot Healing Brush. Um, the thing I don't like is is this uh, little tower thing here so I'm gonna get rid of it because it's just gonna make uh, the depth map and everything that I'm doing it's a little bit uh, harder to do so I've gotten rid of that and it's pretty good as it is so I don't really have to do much more all I have to do is just go to file uh, export and then save this as a JPEG so now once we've saved that image as a JPEG all we need to do is we need to create a depth map from that image so all you have to do is go to this uh, link that's provided in the description and this will automatically generate a depth map for this image once you have that then you will need to take this image or both these images and take them into after effects so here we are in after effects and what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new comp 1920 by 1080 pixels 30 fps at a duration of about 10 seconds press ok once we've got that the next thing that we need to do is we need to import our files so i'm just going to right click go file import and then all i'm going to do is just drag them to my timeline the next thing that i need to do is because i saved these uh, pictures a bit too big i'm just going to press s for scale and i'm just going to change the scale down to whatever fits your composition once you're happy with that i'm just going to put the map layer at the bottom and i can take the eye off because we don't really even need it and then what i'm going to do is on the outpost layer i'm going to search for an effect called displacement map and i'm going to change the map layer to our map layer and i'm also going to change the horizontal and vertical displacement to luminance and i'm just going to bump up these values over here now you can see what's happening there as i shift that around so if i do something like 25 now this will set us up for the next part of this tutorial so the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that that layer is a 3d layer if you don't see it you can always press toggle switches and then what you can do is you can create a new camera so if you just right click and create a new camera i'm just going to run with a 50 mil camera i'm going to press ok the next thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to press P for position and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the effects of my outpost layer, go to the displacement map and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold option and hit that stopwatch and drag it to that first value in my position. And now what I need to do is I need to write negative 960 so that's that value there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the max vertical displacement. I'm going to hold option, click on that stopwatch, click that pick whip, grab it to that and I'm going to write whatever value was in there, 540. So now once we've done that, now if I go back to my camera and if I press C or this orbit around tool, now I can animate that and I can get some pretty cool effects happening in there. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to hit that stopwatch for position. 
and then I'm gonna worry about this first value over here. So I'm gonna bring it out until it starts to look a little bit chaotic. So maybe something like that. So you can see here now we've got all these kind of duplicates happening and maybe it doesn't look the best. But as long as it doesn't have too much happening, then I'm gonna to move to the end of the composition and I'm gonna move it back the other way until it starts to look a little bit wonky. So maybe something, something like that. And so now if we preview that, so now we're going from one side to the other side. And we're gonna do the same thing with the second value here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, uh, maybe I'll bring that up to maybe let's say something like that. And then I'm gonna get to the end and I'm gonna bring it the other way, just like that. So now it goes from something like that to something like that and that looks pretty cool. And the final thing that we're gonna do is we are going to add a zoom. So I'm just gonna hit the last value, so the Z axis here and I'm just gonna kinda zoom in it gets to something like that. So now we have three axes moving and it's still it's not really that great here because we have these black bars over here. So what we need to do is we need to go to the start of the composition and we're just gonna kind of zoom in until that's all gone. And then now we have that rotation happening there. And that's looking pretty good. So now we're gonna move on to the next thing. So now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make the sky move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go onto that outpost uh, layer and I'm gonna search for an effect called corner pin. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I'm at the start of my animation here. And I'm gonna hit these two values over here. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom out and I'm just gonna grab this value over here and I'm just gonna drag it out till it's over, maybe over somewhere over there. The more you drag it out, the more that you will see the sky move. So that's totally up to you. I'm gonna get to the end of the composition and what I'm gonna do is firstly, I'm going to reset that. So it goes back to zero. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it the other way. So now if you've done that correctly, now you will see it move from one side to the other side. And that's looking pretty cool. Now you can see the sun is coming in, but everything is moving, so it's getting a bit, you know, dizzy, I guess. So now we don't want the bottom bit to actually move. So what we're gonna do is we are going to duplicate that. And what we are going to do is we are going to remove that corner pin from that duplicate. And then what we are going to do is we are going to then create a mask. So I'm just gonna create a rough mask, something like that. And then I'm just gonna press F and I'm just gonna increase that feather to about 50. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna preview that and see if there's any, you know, problems there. And you know what, like it looks pretty good. Like you can kind of see like, you know, there's this line there. So what you can do is you can just go and you can play around with some of these uh, settings here or you can actually increase the feather as well. So you maybe increase the feather to something like 200. Uh, maybe that will help you with, uh, with that illusion there. So that looks pretty good. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the final section over here. And this is just pretty much dressing it up. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to go and we are going to add some dust particles. And this is just stock footage that I downloaded from qstockfootage.com. I'm just gonna drag that in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to toggle switches and I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen. And now we have some cool dust particles floating around. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, I just wanna change the opacity and bring that down to maybe about 60% because we don't need it uh, that much. Maybe even less, you know, maybe 50%, something like that. The next thing that we need to do is we're just gonna add some light rays to our outpost. 
So what we can do is we can work on our bottom outpost layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna search for an effect called CC light rays. And you can see what's happened here that it already kind of blends in. And honestly, if you just left it like that, like it looks pretty damn good already. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna animate it as well. So we are going to animate this uh, center. So I'm just gonna move that center over here and I'm kind of gonna kind of follow the sun as well. So I'm just gonna go through my timeline and then I'm just gonna move it to where I kind of want it. Maybe something like that. So now I've got this animating sun that kind of comes in over the top as well. So that's looking pretty good. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add an adjustment layer and inside the adjustment layer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that that adjustment layer is right at the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to search for some curves and then I'm just going to play around with some of these settings. So for example, uh, you can kind of make, you know, a little bend like that, depending on how you want the colors to kind of look. So I was going for that kind of old school, kind of gritty kind of vibe. So I was just uh, dragging these colors a little bit down. And the final thing that we're gonna do here is we are going to add another adjustment layer and I'm gonna search for the effect called noise. And so I'm just gonna bump that up to maybe like 10% or even 8%, something like that. Just so it looks a little bit more gritty and it kind of ties everything together. Now, if you're happy with your uh, animation there, you can stop there. But if you do have uh, access to the Red Giant plugins, they have some really cool plugins that you could actually uh, use in this case. And the first one is, I'm gonna show you on a new adjustment layer. The first one is called Heatwave. And what Heatwave does is that it creates this kind of, uh, you know, it looks like it's, you know, um, got that fire effect. And honestly, like when you put it with this scene, you can see or you can kind of have that feeling that it's pretty hardcore outside in that environment. So the last effect that I'm gonna put on here is another effect from uh, Red Giant, which is called uh, Shrink Ray. And it's pretty cool um, because it can make, um, you know, large things look small or small things look large, you know. Um, but right now as it is, like it doesn't look that great, but if I remove the contrast strength and if I, or if, or if I just remove the contrast and remove the saturation, now it goes back to what it originally looks like. I change the focus position over here. You can see what is actually happening. Like things in the background are getting a little bit blurrier. So, you know, I can increase that value over here and I can play around with some of these settings. So it's kind of blurring out the background, which I think looks pretty cool. So as it goes on, um, it really ties everything together. And I think that looks pretty nice. So anyways, guys, um, Thanks for watching this short tutorial on how to use AI to create a very simple animation like this. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.